Yeah, so I went to go visit my Bro friend. Bro visited his friend. This meme that went viral in March of 2024 was almost certainly a first introduction to the protagonist of today's story, Fallen Chungus. Essentially a Twitter e-celeb, he garnered a huge audience with his simple, highly memeable comics parodying online discourse and culture. But those who followed him for his unique art were unwillingly signing up to what would become possibly the most dramatic and rapid fall off to ever grace the internet. From multiple doxings, countless suicide threats, and real life family drama leaking into the online world. That's just to name a few of the insane developments that color Chungus' short but morbidly fascinating career. In this video I aim to go over everything, to finally paint a clear picture of what caused Chungus to become truly fallen. Little is known of Chungus before his online fame, but it's evident he's always been someone very attached to the internet. Using it both as his primary means of social interaction and as an avenue of sharing his art, both his drawings that would make him famous as well as game development which also seems to be a passion of his. With him setting up the Fallen Chungus account in September of 2023, just before turning 18, he'd quickly find success when he started producing his iconic Pinhead comic series. By the way, these would start to garner respectable attention on the platform, with these early bangers garnering almost 10k likes. Hey boss, what's the plan? Who the fuck are you people? I thought I hired goons. They can be taken again. Who the fuck are you people? I thought I hired goons! I'm multi fandom. Which means I like multiple things. Dude, I'm a fucking goblin. I don't care. I'm gonna take your shit and then kill you. His comics really struck a chord, often taking inspiration from the kind of discourse seen on the platform he calls, or called home, Twitter. He certainly has a unique art style. The purposefully ugly, simple designs with the overly detailed facial expressions achieved by adding extra details like skin folds and misaligned features, all tied together with MS Paint looking line art, it's really something. And although the humor often follows the usual Twitter webcomic straw man format, it's pushed to such an extreme it's impossible to take serious offense to, while still working as a form of light commentary on the online spaces we inhabit today. But Chungs' account truly blew up when in March of this year, he posted the viral sensation Bro visited his friend. This comic, along with the This Thing Sucks Actually, releasing that same month, absolutely exploded in meme culture, spawning endless remixes and rocketing the recently turned 18 Fallen Chungus into bona fide Twitter celebrity status. With him continuing to pump out more and more of these comics at a crazy rate to hundreds of thousands of likes, riding the wave to more and more followers and notoriety. But with a big audience comes a big target. It seems every overnight success story like this inevitably comes with a wave of controversy, often from jealous associates from before they blow up threatening to derail the train. And of course, Chungus was no different. The Chaser Arc Despite the irreverence of his comics, Chungus takes the internet very seriously. Something that'll prove to be at the core of almost every unfortunate event we'll be going over today. Like most Twitter artists, Chungus is close-knit with the politically progressive side of Twitter. And throughout his online life, he made frequent posts and comments to and about trans women. Comments that to some came across a little too eager. After his blow up in late 2023, old associates compiled these posts into an image, spreading accusations that Chungus was a chaser. Essentially a term referring to someone who fetishizes trans women in a demeaning, objectifying way rather than being attracted to them for who they are. However, the evidence was flimsy at best, with Chungus giving a more than reasonable explanation. This image surfaced like last year after a weird period where a lot of my close trans friends were going through shit, so I tried to be an ally and failed miserably. That's quite literally the end of it. However, this wasn't enough for some people, like user Lennox Rose and her cohorts who continued to spread the image and accusations even months later whilst also claiming that Chungus defending himself was incredibly dangerous as his big account would lead to anyone he argued with getting harassed. Although there is never any evidence of that happening. Prompting Chungus to fight back in this post from May of this year. Accused of being a chaser when there's no actual evidence. I defend myself. Everyone calls me retarded and replies with memes or blatantly hypocritical rhetorics. The only thing I'm worried about is the initial quote retreat and your fans possibly harassing Dart. You're worried about a hypothetical that didn't happen. Whenever I have to even deal with this sort of thing, my fans just echo what I say. They don't fucking harass anyone, and I'd like to see one genuine example of harassment on my end. Go on. The drama grew ridiculously more intense when Lennox Rose and another user going by Azil publicly and blatantly threatened to dox Chungus. 
Rather than reporting the accounts and ignoring these obviously unhinged individuals, Chungus would reply with this. Whatever. I'm going nuclear. Some people who preach morality above all want me doxxed and dead for speaking my mind over people's hate boners for me. I want these people gone. <laughs> Holy moly. This inevitably just brought more attention to the situation. Initially in support of Chungus for how unfairly he was being dogpiled over a couple cringy comments. But the exposure backfired when the user posted the doxing thread claimed it was spurred on by Chungus allegedly convincing another user going by the name of Riki to attempt suicide. Saying it was due to harassment from Chungus's fans after he had tagged her in one of his posts defending himself against the chaser allegations. Yes, all this crazy stuff is from that one stupid image. At this point, things were really getting out of hand, and Chungus, understandably, wasn't taking it super well, posting several tweets lashing out at the accounts for the accusation which, thankfully, turned out to be false, with him having a full-on meltdown culminating in this very concerning tweet and a later goodbye video with a black screen. There's honestly no point in continuing. For better or for worse, this is the last you're ever going to hear of me. And whether it be tonight, tomorrow, or the day after, I will kill myself. You've won. I'm done trying, so do what you will with that information. I'm just, I'm leaving. Please don't contact me. Please don't do anything to reach out to me. I'm done. After Chungus claimed to be making a suicide attempt over another person's suicide attempt being blamed on him, Lennox, who made the initial claim, then said she was going to make a suicide attempt over the whole thing. I don't even know. I'll say now there are even more of these later in the video, but no one actually ends up hurt or anything. Uh, don't worry. She posted a tweet the next morning saying, My attempt failed, I'm okay now. With this potential triple kill being the culmination of the chaser arc and Chungus' first major drama. Chungus returned 11 days after his disappearance, saying he was checked into a mental hospital after the situation, is better now, and he'll be stepping away from his internet fame. Got doxxed by the shardy while I was in the mental hospital. Just got home today. I'm not coming back, period. I want my story to serve an example of both what not to do and what to dreadfully expect when you find fame. It's about time I start my own life. He'd return a few days later. But wait, what's that about doxing? I don't remember that happening. Well, fewer, that's actually a part of another major drama that was going on concurrently to the chaser drama being Chungus' run-in with the infamous, toxic, knockoff 4chan troll site known as Soyjack Party. The Soyjack Arc This whole thing kicked off in April of 24, when the right-wing engagement farm, a tired meme clown, reposted Chungus' bro visit his friend comic without credit. Something that's been a consistent issue for Chungus as well as pretty much any overnight sensation online, with even Wendy's stealing his art before. But this time Chungus threatened to cease and desist the account. Tired Meme Clown retaliated by creating a fake racist comic imitating Chungus' style, claiming it to be made by him. I think both the cease and desist and the imitation comic were made tongue in cheek and ultimately had little impact. So the situation should have fizzled out within the day. Just as the countless other small scale pointless Twitter spats Chungus consistently engages in. But unfortunately for him, this exchange caught the attention of the Soyjack party. Soyjack Party is an image board similar to 4chan, known for funny stuff like creating a few popular memes and OC jacks, but also has a reputation for being quite toxic, with raids and extreme trolling, including doxing people, being quite common there. Seeing Chungus as an easy target, and inspired by Meme Clown's imitation comic, a thread was started coordinating attacks to flood the internet with similar racist, transphobic, and generally offensive comics made to look like his, aiming to get under Chungus' skin some of which were admittedly pretty funny. And Chungus would quickly give them the attention they wanted by making a tweet defending himself. Genuinely can't believe I have to say this, but I didn't make this comic. If you see any comics that look like they're made by me, but they have a racist message, they are not made by me, please just leave me alone. After this, the trolling from Soyjack only intensified, with them then, in my opinion, taking things a little too far by raiding Chungus' Discord server. Apparently, they spammed gore, slurs, and not safe for work stuff in a server almost certainly full of minors. And Chungus would once again take to Twitter explaining the situation, and he seems to think that Soyjack's hatred from him comes from the Chaser drama. Uh, I'm not certain where this connection is, to be honest. A lot of the lore is from deleted messages and whatnot, but um, 
From my perspective, it seems spurred on purely by his spat with Tired Meme Clown and his lolcow like insistence to constantly engage with trolls. But regardless, both dramas going on at the same time, the Soyjack raids definitely contributed to his already poor mental state. With the Soyjack arc drawing to a close when someone on a tread made a post reading, Docs now. Although initially just one post, Chungus would post a tweet freaking out over it, inevitably drawing even more attention to the situation and pushing Soyjack to actually pursue finding his personal info just to mess with him. Uh, these guys kinda suck, huh? I liked them more when they were just making funny memes. But anyways, Soyjack finally found a lead, although they were unsure of its accuracy. That was until Chungus posted this video in response. You are such a fucking f man. No one, and I mean no one, fucking likes you. Inadvertently confirming the docs and ending up with not only his, but also his family's personal info such as phone numbers being posted online for anyone to see and potentially abuse. Now, thankfully, it seems like there wasn't anything too bad, like swatting or IRL harassment to come from this. However, it did result in someone texting Chungus' mother after his concerning goodbye video to make sure he was okay, making it so his family became aware of his online presence and all the insane, self-destructive drama that came along with it. After confirming he was okay, Chungus' mom asked for more info and actually ended up receiving a link and <laughs> actually reading the Soyjack tread on Chungus. What the fuck? I had no idea he was posting stuff like that. The Homeless Arc So, finally moving forward in the timeline to July of 2024, after he returned from the mental hospital, Chungus' family attempted to take away his internet access, as it was obviously at the root of all his problems. His mom pushed him to get a job and move out since he was now an adult, and in response Chungus went to Twitter to vent over the situation. For anyone wondering, my mom has essentially been controlling my entire life since I got home. Even now tweeting this is a gamble on whether I get kicked out of the house or not. I do not care. I just want her to realize going cold turkey on the internet won't help me. The phrasing of this, using the term cold turkey like an alcoholic or something, and still fent tweeting even with the risk of being kicked out for it, really makes it clear Chungus has an unironic addiction to the internet. If you couldn't already infer that. I'm just hoping to move the fuck out so I can hop on game dev and do shit that makes me happy. I've been incredibly stressed and my mom and stepdad simply do not give a fuck. I get internet access is a blessing and a curse, but making this a productive thing isn't hard. It seems like Chungus's plan was to stay at home and try to spin his comics and a Roblox game he was working on into a viable career, instead of getting a job or going to college or whatever. I can understand his perspective since he does have a sizable audience online, but no boomer parents are going to understand that, and especially not when he spends the majority of his time online not making money but rather shitposting or getting into insignificant to insane drama like what caused this whole mess in the first place. Stuff really got wild when the next day he posted this. I am now officially homeless. Things are bleak but I'm getting set up with a shelter and I'm gonna go job searching on Monday. I'm also gonna be setting up payment methods for both donations and art comps. Chungus claimed the disputes over his mental health and internet access was the main factor, with his family taking away his belongings and saying they'd kick him out if he went online, with him further claiming his stepdad was previously physically abusive towards him. So of course his fans were pretty unanimously supportive of Chungus, giving emotional support after learning of his bleak situation, helping him out by sending donations to a page he opened up and ordering art commissions. With some people even reaching out later that day when Chungus asked if anyone could provide a place for him to sleep for a while. However, everything changed when later that day Chungus' real life aunt entered the drama. Aunt Chungus quickly dismantled his claims of family abuse, revealing there was a lot more to the story which Chungus conveniently left out. Maybe you should be honest here and stop spreading lies about your parents. You made this happen because you couldn't control your tempo over a stupid computer. Get it right, bro. She later implied Chungus had violent tendencies and constantly caused arguments at home, apparently leaving his mom on the verge of a mental breakdown. Her identity was confirmed when Chungus replied, not denying any of her claims, but rather pivoting from portraying himself as a helpless victim with an abusive family to something that's likely a lot closer to reality, saying, At no point did I claim I didn't fuck up, but nothing I've done to my mom, stepdad, or anyone else in this family warranted me being left destitute. Piss off. So it appeared the situation at the very least 
was a lot more grey than Chungus had painted it, and his previously unanimously supportive fanbase were beginning to question him. Soon after, members of Chungus's Discord would find his aunt's identity and the number of her business. And, presumably, still fuming over her earlier comments, instead of removing the post and discouraging his fans, Chungus decided to encourage them to call and harass his own aunt, with her business being slammed with fake one-star reviews and prank calls. You'd think after everything he went through after his docs, he'd be a little sympathetic here, but no, I guess not. Yeah, personally, this is when I lost a lot of my sympathy for Chungus. Trolling and poor mental health aside, this is just ridiculously petty and uncalled for. And I'm not alone in thinking that, as after this, pretty much everyone turned on Chungus, with the ridiculousness of the whole thing causing this drama in particular to go somewhat mainstream, with it getting covered by some big YouTubers. Under the intense pressure, Chungus drew the homeless arc to a close with another suicide threat. I've well and truly given up. This past week has been detrimental, and I've been contemplating suicide almost every hour of the day. I don't want comments telling me to reconsider. I'm only letting y'all know, so where I am isn't a question. So, I didn't want to mention it earlier, as it's easy to sound demeaning, but Chungus does this a lot. Even before the one earlier in the video, he's been known to have posted several threats on his own life before rising to Twitter fame. And his detractors point to this, along with his inability to avoid drama and consistent fan tweeting about very personal stuff as his biggest flaws. With these mental health crises always seeming to come about when he's under heavy fire online for something stupid he did. Stopping people from criticizing him as they become concerned for his well-being, only for Chungus to return a week or two later, make a post saying he's reformed and wants to avoid drama from now on, then return to business as usual until his next big controversy where the cycle inevitably repeats. And let me remind you, these are only the most notable of his dramas and they've all taken place within the time frame of a few months. And only counting the ones we know of, this is the fifth time he's done this so far. But anyway. After this, Chungus was once again checked into a mental hospital, and after getting out, returned to his family home. He'd make an apology post clarifying there was no actual physical abuse, and claiming the arguments causing the whole thing were mutual between him and his family, but never should have been publicized by him, as it only made things worse. Seemingly, making up with his family and reaching some form of compromise, where he'd pursue employment to eventually work towards moving out on his own, and not spend all his time online. Liquid Chungus Art so after his return, although he'd still get into a revelant, small-scale drama as always, for the most part, Chungus managed to avoid any major controversy. Although sadly he wasn't making his comics much anymore, and he used his account mainly to promote his Roblox game he's still currently working on, called Agony Arena. It features lots of classic creepypasta characters, and it actually looks kinda cool. But the final and most absurd arc would be set off by one little joke by a fan. In October of 2024, someone made a fake Fallen Chungus account on the soon-to-be-dead Twitter competitor, Blue Sky, with fake posts making fun of him. I need Twitter premium again. I genuinely don't know how else I'm supposed to make money, and I don't want to get a job because they seem too hard. After calling out the faker and seeing how everyone thought it was funny, it seemed to be the straw that broke the camel's back for Chungus, with him seriously beginning to fall out of love with his fame and the inevitable drama that came along with it. As very soon after, he announced he was going to permanently deactivate the Fallen Chungus account. I'm tired of having to manage 70,000 followers. I just want to move on from comics and endless trend chasing in favor of game development. I'm sorry, and I hope me simply moving on is enough to redeem myself in some way. Thank you for the support. He'd return the next day. To no one's surprise really, he's quote unquote left Twitter a dozen times and always returns within a handful of days and Chungus himself was well aware of this lack of discipline. So, a week later, to prevent himself from going back on his promise again, Chungus announced he was going to sell the Fallen Chungus account. So the specifics of this are a little murky, with information provided online and Chungus' own accounts being a little inconsistent, but essentially this is how everything went down. Some unknown figure offered to buy the account for $500 in two installments, $250 for the initial payment to prove he was legit, and then another $250 after receiving the account. So Chungus took the deal and sent over his login details, only to then quickly have a change of heart, and not only did he ask for the account back, but also, for some reason, send him back the 250. To which the buyer responded by changing the password and email, locking him out for good, and blocking his contacts on everything. <laughs> Essentially ending the exchange with Chungus losing his near 100k follower account and receiving 
nothing in return. Chungus instantly fell into panic, trying to get his fans to report the account, but it was unsuccessful. With him finally giving up, as seen on this tweet on his alternate account, that's Mojo. I'm genuinely going to go dark on everything, dude. Why does literally nothing go my way, ever? Chungus would then fully crash out and straight up delete his alternate account, although he made a new one one day later. It's here where the details of the botch selling of his account became public knowledge, and in what I can only imagine was extremely upsetting for him to see, at this point, after all the drama, missteps, fake threats of leaving Twitter and everything else, he'd fallen so far out of favor with his own audience that Chungus received basically no sympathy over the situation, with people simply joking around about it and, <laughs> pretty unanimously, actually preferring the new fallen Chungus owner over him. So once and for all, Chungus would delete that mojo and totally leave Twitter forever for real this time. So, what was going on with the new account owner? Well, he actually brought back Chungus' iconic Pinhead comics. They were not only visually pretty much identical to Chungus' style, but even had the same humor that made the OG Chungus go viral in the first place. Because of this, people took to referring to the new owner as Liquid Chungus, in a pretty funny double entendre referencing both Liquid Snake from NGS and also the all-time goat troll Liquid Chris, who similarly played a character that was a carbon copy of Chris Chan, but way more talented and beloved than the real one. Or if you prefer, I guess there's the more sumer-pilled Kenjaku Chungus moniker, in reference to the Jujutsu Kaisen character, which uh, Liquid Chungus actually acknowledged in this pretty funny tweet. Although Liquid Chungus's tweets are pretty funny, it seems like he also is somewhat of a mean streak, and may himself be a detractor of Chungus, as he decided to use his newfound powers to do a little trolling, with him initially charging the payments for Twitter Premium to Chungus's credit card, which was still linked to the account. It seems Chungus managed to quickly put an end to that, but there was nothing he could do to protect the other sensitive content still linked to his lost account, as shortly after procuring the fallen Chungus account, Liquid Chungus decided to publicize the account's bookmarks. Oh no. Dropping all of Chungus's goon fuel for the world to see. Uh, I mean, there wasn't anything, like, too bad in here. Mostly just drawings of characters with, like, giant asses. <laughs> Although there was some, uh, uh, fart fetish and four in there too. <laughs> I mean, Chungus w w would actually admit to these being real for some reason. Although he outright denies that the fetishy stuff was real. But based on some of his old joke tweets, uh, I guess I'll let you guys be the judge of that one. But regardless, that is how things stand now with the new owner flawlessly assimilating and replacing Chungus, and the new posts and comics actually doing significantly better than the OG Chungus's posts. Okay, so as I was working on this video, in a shocking twist, Chungus has once again returned to Twitter. I know, who could have seen that coming? Uh, but for real, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Chungus actually seems to have reached some form of truce with Liquid Chungus with him confirming the OG Chungus will be returning to making his viral comics and they'll be posted on the Fallen Chungus account along with those made by Liquid Chungus, who is still the owner. OG pinheads will return to Fallen Chungus in tandem with fan comics. For now I'm logging off and will not be monitoring the Fallen Chungus account unless absolutely warranted, as I want to keep a distance relationship with this platform. So could this be it? After all that, are we finally seeing a happy ending for Chungus? Well, although he claims so many times to be leaving the internet, but wanting to clean up his toxic online persona, with him no longer having to bear the brunt of a huge audience that he clearly can't handle, this recent tweet certainly shows promise for a bright end to the fallen Chungus legend. He moved into a new apartment and have him repairing a bunch of relationships both online and offline. I feel like my life is finally getting back together and I've learned from the mistakes I've made during my time as fallen Chungus. Despite everything, at the end, I don't think Chungus is someone deserving of the hate he receives. At least not anymore. I know I and a lot of people online have made some jokes at his expense, but he's clearly someone who struggles with mental health, and despite being an adult, he's yet to fully grow up, but he still has plenty of time and opportunity to. Although he may have tarnished his legacy in ways, I still believe he has the ability to make genuinely great and funny pieces of art that clearly have the power to connect and bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. So taking a step back from account management, letting his art speak for itself as a hobby and focusing on the real world, as it seems he's learned to, well, you really can't ask for a better outcome. The Chungus may have undeniably fallen, but I think I speak for all of us when I say, I hope to see someone more mature and mentally healthier rise from its ashes. 